Go ahead, Steve, whenever you're ready. Good morning. I'd like to call the annual meeting of Naples United Church of Christ to order. Uh, my name is Stephen Rinesmith. I am the moderator of the church and uh, will be hosting uh, this meeting. I'd like to call on Dawson uh, to offer some explanations about how we're going to manage uh, this virtual meeting and also to provide an opening prayer. Thanks so much, Steve. And it's wonderful to uh, see you. Um, I am uh, here at the church in my office, and I know that you are in Vermont staying safe there with Kathy. And so we are grateful for that and for this technology. I want to take just a moment to say deep words of gratitude to Megan Black, our Director of Programs, as well as Tony Falco, our Director of Technology, and uh, Chelsea Godwin, our receptionist, and Mark Harmon, our new executive director, for all the ways that they have helped us get the, both the printed material, the material that has been sent to the congregation, and then of course, this technology to make this annual meeting um, not only possible, but we anticipate running very smoothly. So it's uh, my deep gratitude to each of them. And it's wonderful to uh, be together uh, again the second time this morning, first for worship and then today. Before I uh, introduce our uh, hymn and before I pray, I just want to go over a few technicalities about um, the technology. Obviously, we're using uh, Zoom, but this is a webinar format. So if you serve on a board or committee or have been doing that with perhaps a different organization. Um, this is different than a Zoom meeting. A webinar has a few more features. It allows for more participation. And so I just wanna let you know, it's a it's slightly different than uh, what you perhaps are accustomed to. I also want to let you know that we will uh, be receiving votes during the meeting for a variety of purposes. Obviously, we have three uh, main purposes of this meeting that's been called our 2021 budget, our uh, 2021 bylaw revisions, as well as our slate of nominations. However, there are things like uh, approval of minutes, bringing things to the floor. If you have already voted by proxy, either a mail-in proxy or if you voted electronically, which uh, Megan will be closing in another two minutes. So if you have an email from SurveyMonkey and uh, have not filled that out, you can still get that to us and we can receive that. We are not going to engage in Chicago style voting. And so if you have already voted, we are using the honor system that you will not vote again in this meeting. We do record the votes, uh, Zoom webinar records who votes. And so if there is a question of any kind, we can go back and check those votes against the proxies that have already been received. So I do want you to know that we do have the capacity and ability to cross check those votes. Um, and not to mention God is watching. So please know that um, we will be uh, checking those votes and you will, when it's time for a vote, Megan, do we have a practice vote that we can run? Um, like we did earlier, just to check the system. Is that possible? So this will come up and um, the question that will need to be answered will come up on a survey. And so this is a really important thing for us to know about our congregation. Do you prefer dogs or cats? So if you will, please fill in the answer. This is not, um, affected by your proxy. So you can vote about this. Do you prefer dogs or cats? So please fill in uh, the answer and then make sure that you hit submit. And then you will see that box disappear once you hit submit because it will go uh, and be tallied. And then Steve will call for the votes from uh, Barbara who will then report those votes. 
So one of the many reasons I love this congregation, 79% of our congregation prefer dogs. And so you will begin to see that that's how votes will be taken. So we just want you to know um, that that is um, the way that you will be able to vote during the meeting. You have the ability to use a chat feature uh, or a Q&A feature rather, so that um, if a question comes up, there are also staff here um, at the church. And so you also, uh, you'll see there, the arrow pointing you to the Q&A. You uh, can also ask a question when uh, the moderator asks if there are questions about what is on the floor. Um, you can also call the um, church office if you're having technical problems. And there are staff here at the church to answer any questions that you may have. So that is a an overview, obviously we want, uh, we have worked very hard for several weeks now to ensure a smooth and accurate uh, annual meeting. This is a an historic annual meeting that it's virtual, but it's also a safe annual meeting. Uh, many colleagues across the country that have done these meetings last week, this week and next week. So uh, we're all learning from one another as well as what our staff has done in preparation. Obviously mistakes can happen, but we have worked very hard to ensure that that does not happen. So in the spirit of being this great church and gathering this morning in our annual meeting, will you join your hearts with mine in prayer? Let us pray. Oh God, our help in ages past and our hope for years to come. As we gather physically distanced, but not spiritually separated. We give you thanks for all of the ways that your spirit has guided us in the past and all the ways that we trust that you will lead us into the future. For the gift of technology, for the gift of faithful leaders, for the gift of generous people, we are especially mindful this day. So be with us, send the presence of your spirit to guide us. Grant us peace, unity, generosity of spirit, and mindfulness of all of the ways that you have called us to serve your people. We trust and we ask this in your many names. Amen. It is also the custom of this congregation that each year we begin our annual meeting by singing the great hymn, We Would Be Building. I just want to offer that this hymn was authored by Dr. Per Dietz, and Dr. Dietz was, has a tie to the history of our church. He was on staff of both the Evangelical and Reformed Church before the Union of the United Church of Christ, and was also on staff of the United Church of Christ, and was sent to Naples as, if you will, a consultant of sorts, um, because we were a church plant of the National Church. And so he came here and lived here for, it appears, about 10 months to a year to help plant this church and partnered with Dr. Bartlett, who was the uh, founding and forming pastor of this church. And so instead of um, the leadership singing that to you and causing you to want to leave the annual meeting, the chamber choir recorded this uh, for us, and we will um, invite them to lead us now in that. Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you, Dawson. It's always good to start with a good old Methodist hymn that's been rewritten. Um, I appreciate that. Um, we move now to the determination of quorum. And uh, I'd like to ask Barbara Converse, a clerk of, uh, of church, to confirm a quorum. Yes, Steve, we do have a quorum. Good. Uh, we'll move now to the approval of minutes from the annual meeting of last year. Um, I'd like to have a, a motion to approve the minutes of the 2020 annual meeting. I move to approve the minutes of the 2020 annual meeting. Thank you. Can I have a second? Second. Thank you. All who have not voted by proxy, uh, please uh, vote your approval on the screen that you see before you. A or nay, and I will uh, announce the total. One hundred percent approval of the minutes of the 2020 annual meeting. Thank you very much. Let me open uh, with a few remarks. Needless to say, um, when I took this position as moderator a year ago today, I had no idea where we were headed as a world and as a nation, as a, as a church. But I wanna welcome you to this annual meeting and, uh, and acknowledge that we haven't worshiped together since in person since March 15th, um, which is a long time. We're very grateful to announce that no member, however, of the congregation has uh, passed away as a result of COVID. And we're really appreciative of the foundation that uh, Ann Olson and her task force on reopening put together about the conditions under which we can and will reopen once the state uh, and the medical authorities uh, in particular say it's safe to do so. I think most of you know that we have set a goal of, of opening after the global uh, Harvard Health Survey has two weeks of green uh, for uh, Collier County. Uh, it's anticipated that that will be a while. It's not gonna happen overnight, but uh, it will be at a time when it's safe for most of us to come back. In the meantime, we're thinking of some other things which I'll talk about in a few minutes. But 2020 forced us to have a transformative year. The biggest was our technology tech, uh, transformation in which we turned around really on a dime in the course of a week or two uh, to broadcast our, our services uh, in, starting with the Sunday worship. And then from there moved to education with clergy roundtables, uh, entertainment uh, with concerts and music programs and, uh, and fellowship discussion groups. Uh, it was a very uh, in innovative year and one in which many people have found a, a source of comfort. We also had Many new publications, Going the Distance, um, is now read by over 700 people. And uh, we continued our Sunday school uh, for children and other children ministries that were available to them. Um, and naturally, we also have PCA that serves 160 children whose families can work 
as a result of their being occupied during the day. So we had new and we had old. In 2021, we're going to continue the transformation, particularly in, in new technology. We do not know what the quote unquote new normal is going to be. But in technology, we're looking forward to uh, enabling uh, not only the sanctuary, but also uh, Beverly Hall, Nelson Hall, uh, to be uh, put online in a way that we can have interactive classes and continue the church uh, as an educational institution. We, uh, we recognize that none of this brings you back to the stillness of the sanctuary uh, that many people find important in their lives. Uh, and we will try to do that as soon as possible. In the meantime, in 2021, we may try new forms of worship uh, uh, outdoors in cars or parks or uh, other ways, small distance massed gatherings as we've already done in the gathering place for people who are uh, grieving the loss of a family member. The Long Range Planning Committee uh, is going to start asking questions about the ratio of the new normal between the worship place and worship on platform. Worship in place, obviously for most of us has been our life. Worshiping on platform is what we are sort of experimenting with these days, but there has been research recently that estimates that uh, as many as 25% of the people worshiping on platform may stay there and not come back. Uh, even when we reopen the church and, and have a safe place. Um, there are other uh, long range planning questions with regard to the next generation. And uh, that's what the committee is going to be looking at as we uh, go into 2021. For today, the next step in the evolution of this wonderful church that uh, you all love so much is going to be the, 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 this annual meeting in which we look at the finances and bylaws and leadership. And I wanna say something about the finances. It's absolutely, you'll hear from a minute, in a minute from Jim Barton, our treasurer, but just as the moderator, on behalf of the, of the whole church, I, I want to thank the generosity that people have shown during the year, uh, during a difficult year in which many have come forward and said, I know this is a difficult year for institutions like the church and I wanna give more to make sure that we're okay. Uh, that has helped enormously. And if we can do that again in 2021, as long as we continue in this COVID um, uh, platform, uh, I would encourage you to do so. It's been an enormous uh, help as you'll hear in a minute. So with that um, opening, I'd like to turn to, to Jim Barton, our treasurer and uh, and thank him for his uh, six years of service as a as the treasurer and acknowledge that Jack Torren will be taking over as a treasurer uh, beginning this year. But I want to give Jim uh, the chance to say a few words about the budget that you all have uh, received in your annual reports. Jim. Uh, thank you, Steve, very much. And 
I, as you can well imagine, I have enjoyed and not enjoyed being treasurer at certain times, but it has been very, very satisfying and re rewarding for me. I, in spite of COVID-19, the church finished the year in a very strong, positive position. We had a year-end surplus of approximately $60,000. The surplus will be placed in our capital reserve fund to support capital needs of the facility. Now to the 2021 budget. Our 2021 budget is $2,119,926. Uh, this uh, budget appears in the annual report and it can be, the uh, total can be found on page 12. All needs of the church in our activities in light of the pandemic were reviewed. As you are aware, the virtual world is here. The church needs to reach out to our members, the younger generation and new communities will be critical. To achieve this goal, we will become a completely virtual church. Thus, we have budgeted for additional, additional staff and technology. The 2021 budget has been approved by the trustees, the church council, and the executive committee. Now I'll turn it back to Steve. Thank you, Jim. Uh, since the budget is coming from the church council, it only needs a second. Um, could I have a second, please? Ronnie? Don't move. Okay. I second, rather. I second. Okay. Um, any questions or discussion from those present? I'm looking at my Q&A chat line and uh, so far do not see any any questions? Okay. If there are no questions, um, I'd like to call for a vote on the adoption of the 2021 budget. Um, people can vote on the screen, A or nay, um, and please submit it. Okay, the result is 54% is in favor and 6% no. So the budget is um, approved um, as uh, presented today. Thank you for that. We come next to the bylaws and uh, they have been uh, rewritten uh, significantly during the last year by a really outstanding committee uh, chaired by Mike Downs with Kitty Keene and John Richardson, um, who have looked at the bylaws uh, with four objectives. The first is to separate policymaking from operations. Uh, there was in the old bylaws, and it has been for years, a lot of um, a lot of paragraphs that specified, uh, for example, how many people had to be on a particular committee or the conditions under which a committee would work. Now we consider those to be operating operating principles versus the, versus the purpose of the committee. And so what we did is we created something that we've never had before called a charter. And these charters are 
um, are uh, written by each committee themselves and the purpose of each committee has been transferred from the old bylaws and then all of the operational needs of the committee have been incorporated by the committee and approved by the executive committee. This is a process that will go on each year that the executive committee will approve the new, any new changes in the bylaws uh, of the committee or in the charters of the committee that they make. And that takes a large amount out of the formal bylaws. So the first objective was to separate uh, the purpose from the operations and to transfer this new document, the charters, and you have a copy of the charters in your annual report. The second was to clarify roles and responsibilities of the clergy and the laity. You know, there have been books written, and I've read them, <laughs> on, on the role of the clergy and the role of the laity. And I come, I'm the son of a Methodist minister, which is a very clergy-driven hierarchical system uh, versus the UCC, which is a very laity-driven uh, flat system. And, uh, and the juggling of these, of the, of the decision-making responsibility between these two uh, and where they, be, where they should be separated, where they should be integrated and how they get integrated is really a large part of what the bylaws are about. And so we spent the, the, uh, the, the task force and uh, the Long Range Planning Committee, the Executive Committee and the Council, all of whom have approved uh, these bylaws that you'll see uh, before you. Um, in clarifying the responsibilities of clergy and laity, we feel that we have gone a long way in ensuring a smoother uh, decision-making process. Uh, we'll see as we go along and adjustments will be made. And my guess is that this is the kind of thing that will change possibly from year to year, certainly from if there's any change in clergy. The third, so the first was separate purpose from operations. Second, clarify roles and responsibilities of clergy. Third, increase the speed of decision-making. As you can appreciate uh, during, especially during this last year, we have had to make decisions very quickly. Um, the church council meets only four times a year and, and when it meets, it's usually for informational sharing. The executive committee is the committee that meets almost every month and the one that we really needed to make policy decisions that affected the church and its capacity to respond to the, uh, to the COVID crisis. So one of the things that has happened in, these, in the bylaws is we have given more responsibility to the executive committee um, to make decisions on behalf of the church uh, uh, when a crisis arises or as the church evolves uh, in its transformation. On the other hand, the church council, which is the representative body of the congregation, along with this annual meeting, still retains the authority for five key areas, which is really important. They approve the annual budget, which they have for this one. They approve a slate of nominees for the leadership of the church, not just the moderator and vice moderator, but all the committees and committee heads. There are in all something on the order of 140 people who volunteer to keep this church going. They, third, they have to approve all capital campaigns. We are currently not in a capital campaign formally, but if we were to go into one, the council would have to approve that. They also have to approve all changes to boards. 
and changes, lastly, to bylaws, uh, which they have done with regard to the bylaws that we're looking at here. So that's the process that we have gone through. We have tried to be as transparent as possible. I hope most of you have had a chance to read the six page introduction to the bylaws, which I wrote on behalf of the Long Range Planning Committee to try to show uh, the changes that were made uh, and um, that uh, it will be clear. But for questions, uh, I would like to uh, introduce Kitty Keene, who is a member of the bylaw task force uh, and an attorney and is the person largely responsible for drafting the bylaws. These bylaws also, by the way, have been reviewed by uh, outside counsel and, uh, and by the Florida Legal, uh, Florida Conference Legal Council uh, to be in line with the, uh, the Florida uh, laws affecting not-for-profit organizations. Since the bylaws are coming from the church council, uh, they only need a second. Could I have a second? Mike? Second. Okay, thank you. Um, this uh, bylaw portion of the discussion, uh, we would like to try to limit to 15 minutes. Uh, for questions pertaining to the bylaws uh, on your chat function. So uh, the floor is now uh, open uh, for the question and answer feature on your, on your computer. Steve, we already have one Q&A inquiry that's been made. I see that um, from uh, John Esty. It says, the bylaws are one of our most important and lengthy documents. Many thanks to the review committee and all who worked on them. Given the importance of bylaws and the extent of the changes, I wonder why the congregation did not receive the draft bylaws sooner. Also, why the moderator memo was helpful, it would have been good to have received a document showing the specific changes. Could you give us some insight on why we didn't have more time for review and questions being asked prior to the vote? Um, on the question of timing, um, there is a, a two week uh, period that everything discussed at the annual meeting needs to be distributed. Um, we were working up until the last minute with the bylaw committee to get the final draft of the bylaws. Um, on the, the question of you know, the, the details of the changes, we uh, started in mid-July with, uh, with drafts of the old bylaws and showing the changes and we draft one showed all the changes, draft two showed changes, draft three, four, five. By the time we got to you know August, we had so many changes and drafts that it really was becoming almost impossible to, uh, to, to read. And so we wrote the summary to try to provide the highlights of the changes in the bylaws because to send out a document that had all the changes was almost virtually impossible. If you would like to compare the 2018 bylaws with the new ones, we would be happy to provide you with that. Um, but that's, uh, that's the reason that it was uh, two weeks. I think in the future on, on the change of bylaws, we might push it out uh, another week or two. Kitty, do you have a comment? Yeah, I, I'd say it's important to note that we actually uh, had a couple of Zoom meetings where members of the general congregation 
could appear and ask questions about the the new version of the bylaws and um, and make suggestions. And we in fact had people who showed up and did that. That's also true. Thank you for reminding me of that. We had yes, we had two two hour open meetings for anybody in the congregation uh, to ask questions. Uh, so while we didn't uh, fulfill your need, John, the way you've asked the question, um, I think that uh, I think we we're aware of the need for the kinds of things that you've mentioned, and we'll take that into the future with us. Any new any other uh, questions? Okay, I don't see any other. Um, so um, let us uh, go for a vote on the bylaws. Uh, Megan will put up uh, 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 the, uh, the vote page. And if you would please indicate yes, yay, or nay, um, we will tabulate uh, a total vote for those present. Now, obviously, the, we have a, a, a lot of proxies. We had something like 200 and, 230 proxies that were submitted earlier. Of those, there were only, I think, three or four who voted against the bylaws. Uh, so it was overwhelmingly uh, adopted uh, by those uh, by, who sent in proxies. The current uh, uh, vote um, is 100% um, <laughs> for adoption and <laughs> nobody. <laughs> So nope. with the paper and the electronic, uh, that's both. Boxes, that that's... motion has passed. Well, well, I would say so. <laughs> <laughs> we are. Uh, I I really want to tell you that we are we are heartened by that because this was a very complicated process, when, and we spent hours and hours and hours on it, and tried to be as fair and as transparent as possible, and. To have uh, that kind of support means an enormous amount to the people who worked on it and to, uh, to the clergy and those who will be working with it. So I really want to thank you for, for that. So we move now to the nominating committee um, <clears throat> to introduce the, the uh, officers and uh, others responsible for the leadership of the church during the next year. Uh, and I want to call on Jen Rainey, who's the chair of the nominating committee, to, uh, to provide uh, the information on that and to ask for the vote. Thank you, Steve. So there's um, a couple of changes to what was sent out in the package. Um, on membership and growth, Akiko Boltman, Margaret Perrin, Marianne Fasulo, Nancy Holcomb, Charlotte Bromley were left off membership and growth. So I'm nominating them as well today. And um, a new category is that Louise Brown would be the chair of the con search for the Minister for Congregational Care. So um, I'd like a second, please. I second. Thank you, David. So now we would call for a vote, please. It looks like 100% uh, approved of the slate as presented. Um, so with both 
the paper and the electronic proxies, we have passed the motion. Thank you very much, Barbara. Finally, as we move toward the conclusion, I want to acknowledge uh, the annual reports, the boards and committees, task forces, and all the other entities who wrote, spent time writing uh, a uh, review of their activities. You, you will find those reports in the church's annual report. Uh, there are a lot of them, uh, and they they represent a lot of activity. And when you think about it, when you really think about it, it looks like a normal year, <laughs> which is so amazing given the fact that we have been operating under COVID this last year. The, this church has continued its activities uh, as given uh, to, to Harry Chapin and to Grace Place uh, uh, food and and has continued its generosity uh, to others while at the same time, we've been able to maintain our, our, uh, our own building and grounds and, and staff. And uh, it's been really a, a, a wonderful year and you can read all about it in the reports that you will see. Um, so, with that, I would like to introduce uh, Reverend Dr. Deborah, Deborah Kygus her cross, Minister for Congregational Care, uh, and regretfully uh, say that it is uh, her last annual meeting with us uh, because she will be retiring on May 31st after 40 years of devoted service to the church, but even more so the, the people of the church. And I, I can't begin to express what a loss um, people will feel personally, uh, but we all wish you, Deborah, the, the most uh, wonderful retirement uh, and uh, we wish all the people that you touch uh, the light uh, and insight that you have shared with us over the last few years. It has been invaluable. So if you offer a closing prayer, we would appreciate it. Thank you for those really kind words. This place has been a wonderful last place for ministry, and I am so grateful for all of you. So let's join together in prayer. Good and gracious God, we thank you for all those who work together to further your realm here in this place. We thank you for all the work that has led to this day, for those who've invested so much of themselves in the mission of NUCC. Although we may not always agree, we trust that together we can complement each other's strengths and cancel out each other's weaknesses. As a unified team of clergy and laity focused on the mission ahead of us, we believe we can do great things together in your name. So as we leave today, we commit to continue to strive for your will, piece by piece and day by day together. Amen. Thank you very much, Deb. And just one additional word I have to put in, and that is that none of what we achieved last year would have been possible without Dawson. Uh, and when we talk about being united um, in the country today, uh, being united across laity and, and clergy uh, is something that this church really exemplifies. And I want to thank Dawson and Deb and David uh, and uh, and uh, uh, why am I blocking uh, Hewing uh, Sharon Harris Hewing um, for the leadership that you have provided at at levels that uh, that really could never have been expected um, uh, to deal with this this COVID crisis. It, you've been a wonderful team, 
and we uh, and we want to thank you all. And I'm sorry not to be ending on a prayer, but but I want to end on a statement of enormous unity uh, for all of us going forward. So thank you very much. And this meeting is formally adjourned. <laughs>